The family of a Port Huron man who died after being restrained by bar security guards is speaking out tonight. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rupe Raj. Witnesses say that the man was verbally trying to protect some women who were being harassed when security guards grabbed him and then held him down until he could not breathe. Fox News' Ingrid Kelly spoke to the victim's father today. She's joining us live. And I imagine he is right. just stunned and heartbroken, mm -hmm. Ingrid. Oh, most definitely. And just take a look. This memorial continues to grow as friends and family demand answers and justice. It's a reality that's hard to accept. He's a very thoughtful kid. Um, he didn't deserve this. Mike Conant becoming emotional when he thinks about the fact that his son Joshua died outside of this Port Huron bar early Saturday morning. He was just 26 years old. They had no right touching my kid. Witnesses say Joshua was protecting women at the bar who were being harassed when things got out of control. The commotion poured outside the bar, and that's where witnesses say Joshua stopped breathing as he was being held down by security guards. These bouncers followed him outside of their area, pushed him down, and, and, and tripped him up and pushed him down and, and choked him out. and. They, they squeezed the life out of my son. But when Port Huron police arrived, Joshua's dad says things did not get better for his son based on video recordings from the scene. And he questions why police would handcuff a person who was not moving and who was not under arrest. He's unresponsive at that time. You know, and, and they're saying don't struggle. He's not struggling. He's not moving. Fox 2 reached out to Michigan State Police, the lead investigators in this case. And officials say an autopsy was conducted Monday that will determine the cause of death. And once all information is collected, the investigation will be turned over to prosecutors who will determine if anyone is criminally responsible. Justice is coming. You know, I sure hope so. As the family continues to mourn the passing of Josh, this is not the first tragedy they've suffered. Josh the twin. His brother was two and a half and he had leukemia. And unfortunately, you know, he didn't survive. Now this family is relying on happier times to get them through, including Josh's passion for cars and the love and support of family and friends who started a movement, Justice for Josh, to make sure anyone responsible pays for this tragedy. This kid just didn't deserve what, what he got. Now, Michigan State Police make it clear that the, the balancers are actually not collected to the Port Huron Police Department, and they also say that no officers right now are on administrative leave. Back to you. All right, just to clarify here, Ingrid, so the people responsible, they're bouncers, not officially security guards. Where do things stand with them exactly? Obviously, we're having an a, a audio issue there, but uh, Ingrid Kelly reporting for us tonight. Also tonight, a Detroit man is charged with a deadly stabbing inside a local high school. Hamida Ramadan Kader Muhammad is accused of killing Stephen Gibson at Redford Union High School last week. Both of them were working as custodians at that school. Muhammad is charged with first-degree murder. Investigators say he stabbed the victim several times. Police say it happened after school hours, and no students were present at the time. A former Warren police officer who was caught on camera assaulting a black inmate during booking is facing federal charges. Back in June, video showed 48-year-old Matthew Rodriguez hitting inmate Waquan Smith and then slamming his head on the floor while he was being processed. Prosecutors say the former Warren officer then made false statements about what happened. Rodriguez is also facing several charges in this case, including falsifying records. He was fired from the department following the investigation. Well, as you know, we reported on it a lot recently. Crimes targeting mail carriers in Metro Detroit. And right now, a lot of those mail carriers are getting together in downtown Detroit with a message. That's where we find Fox News' Dave Spencer live from that rally outside the post office in downtown Detroit. And Dave, what are they saying out there? 
Yeah, Rup, the message is pretty clear here. It's uh, enough is enough. You could see them starting to gather behind me. They've been doing this now for roughly 15 to 20 minutes. They've been saying that they never dreamed in a million years that they would be here together asking for the public's assistance and just allowing them to do their job safely. We have reported, as you mentioned, two recent attacks of mail carriers in Taylor, others in Southfield, we've seen them in Northville, and it's not just happening here in Michigan. According to the National Union representative, president here, they've been saying um, that uh, it's been happening at, uh, almost weekly, and they would love to see something done about that. They say there is something the public can do. Here is their message to you. They can be the eyes and ears. So you usually know when your mail is coming. You usually see your letter carrier's vehicle. You know where they park. Kind of be observant of what you see is going on around us. If you see something that looks totally out of the ordinary, pick up the phone and call 911. Yeah, to just illustrate how real this is, we've heard two people today, speaking today at this rally, that say they have been victims. They've had a gun held to their head as they went to a lockbox to try and get the mail. They said that there are things in place right now at the national level in terms of laws to strengthen punishments, to try and deter criminals from committing these acts and making sure that if they do, they are punished to the fullest. So they hope to have those laws passed within the year. They're asking people to a be vigilant for your uh, mail carrier be their eyes and ears if you see something say something and b call your representative get this legislation passed so they can feel safe again in doing their jobs reporting live in downtown detroit dave spencer fox 2 news okay dave thanks for the update on that well one teenager is killed another seriously hurt after a car crash on i-96 in detroit it happened yesterday on the eastbound side of the freeway near fullerton Police say a 16-year-old driver was taking a curve too fast, lost control, and then crashed. The passenger, also 16, was ejected from the vehicle. That passenger is now in critical condition. State police are urging parents to remind young drivers about the importance of safe driving. Oh, it was garbage day in our neighborhood today, and with all the wind that we had today, it was like getaway garbage cans everywhere you looked when <laughs> on a walk today. Try to neighbors try to help neighbors grab them back, but uh, a breezy day. But the mild temperatures have felt yeah, pretty good. Yeah, warm and windy, but we'll you know it's pretty good for this time yeah, of the year. It's pretty we'll normal, it. right, Rich? Uh, blustery, that's for sure, uh, Taryn. And yes, it's not unusual to get numbers in the 60s here in early November. Most of the showers that we had crossing the area this afternoon are now well off to our east, moving uh, quickly towards Buffalo and. Uh, uh, Toronto, a couple of leftover showers down there closer to Toledo. So I think we're done with the uh, shower chances, but still 63 here right now, 62 in Battle Creek. You have to go way up north to find some colder numbers. There's Marquette, 48. How about Ironwood, Michigan, in the western UP? They're at 41 degrees. How about live pictures from Petoskey? It's getting darker earlier now that we've uh, moved those clocks uh, back. That was this past weekend. So Petoskey right now, 52 degrees. They've had some showers there for us. Breezy at times. That will continue through the evening down to 46. And then you'll see what's coming up next. It's going to be dry tomorrow, a bit cooler for Election Day. Wednesday sees a return of a few rain showers. And then it will cool off for the weekend ahead. We're going to check that full seven day for you coming up in 10. Root, back to you. All right, good stuff. Thank you so much. Another Republican enters the race to represent Michigan in the U.S. Senate. Today, former Congressman Peter Meyer announced he would run for Debbie Stabenow's seat following her retirement. Now, Meyer served one term in Congress. He was among 10 Republicans who voted to impeach then-President Trump after the 2021 Capitol riot. Meyer will face several opponents in the Republican primary, including former Congressman Mike Rogers and former Detroit Police Chief James Craig.